Hello, fellow book lovers, both readers and writers. I am Maddie Dalrymple. I'm the author of the Anne Kinnear Suspense Novels and Suspense Shorts and the Lizzie Ballard Thrillers. And I also write, speak, consult, and podcast on the writing craft and the publishing voyage as the indie author. And this is my video series, What I Learned, where I ask authors two questions about their latest book. What did they learn from their latest book that they would like to share with their fellow authors? And what did they learn from their latest book that they'd like to share with their fellow readers? And I am joined today by Mark Leslie LaFave. Hey, Mark, how are you doing? Hey, Maddie, great to see you. I am happy to have you here. And to give our listeners uh, and viewers a little bit of background on you, Mark Leslie LaFave, writing fiction as Mark Leslie, is an author, professional speaker, and bookseller with more than 30 years of experience in writing, publishing, and bookselling. Mark formerly headed up Kobo's self-publishing platform, Kobo Writing Life, and is now the Director of Business Development at draft to digital But Mark's primary title is Book Nerd, and he continues to be a passionate storyteller in both the fiction and nonfiction realms. And in fact, Mark was my co-author for the book, Taking the Short Tack, Creating Income and Connecting with Readers Using Short Fiction. And his latest book is Yippie Kaye. And before we get into the two What I Learned questions, I'm going to ask Mark to explain in a channel-appropriate way about the title of his latest book, the extended title of his latest book. So, Mark, how could... How are you going to feel that question? Well, I call this title and company Mother Bleeper only because it's the catchphrase that John McClain says in the first Die Hard movie. And of course, repeats throughout the Die Hard franchise. It became associated with his character. And so that's the title of the book. And the reason I went with that title is because usually if you recognize the quote, you know exactly what movie it came from. And this is a celebration fans guide trivia guide to Die Hard. And that's the book there. So I, and I purposely went with a title like that because I wanted, I was wondering what hasn't really been used as a book title and what is something that's going to instantly identify it to fans, just like the previous book about planes, trains, and automobiles is distinctively visually identifiable for fans. If, if you're a fan, you know it. And if you're not, well, it's maybe not the book for you. And did you have like a script to confirm the spelling of Yippie Kaye? Interestingly enough, yeah, I got I got my hands on one of the scripts available through IMDb, and it's actually spelled differently than the way Bruce Willis pronounces it. The screenplay Hans Gruber pronounces it the exact same way at the end of the movie when he repeats the phrase as he's about to shoot John McClane. The original part of the script, it was Yippie Yay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And also, I mean, I learned, you know, the old, I'm an old cow hand, old song, where it was kind of leveraged from that Roy Rogers performed as well. Yep. So there's, I mean, all this, all of this ground, just to understand the phrase. So I think that's a great lead into the first question of the What I Learned series, which is, what did you learn from Yippie Kaye that you'd like to share with your fellow authors? I think I learned something that's, I think, really important for authors to understand as they are afraid of it. I'll be honest with you. So a book about trivia and Die Hard and, and details of the movies and stuff like that, just like my previous book in that series of trivia for planes, trains, and automobiles, this is not information you can't find online and special features on the DVDs, interviews, articles, countless books, articles that have been written about them. What makes it unique and what makes it different is it's my love and my personal passion for the movies and how I've approached putting all those elements together in a way that is me telling you a unique story. So if you're an author and you're frustrated that the story has been told before, that it's all been before, it's all been whatever. Yeah, of course it has. Even Shakespeare was riffing on Greek tragedies and making them his own. We can continue to do that as writers, no matter what the technology is that we're using and doubling down on your humanity and focusing on why your version of this particular story, or why you framing these elements together is a unique experience that nobody else could provide. That's an important place to start when you're working on a project. What were some of the insights a reader would get about you? in addition to the insights they would get about the movie by reading that book? Well, I mean, I purposely, in, in both in both Yippee-Ki-Yay and in the Canadian Mounted, purposely made a point of showing the reader 
where and how this connects with my personal life. For example, in Yippee Cafe, I talk about how Michael Andrews, my character in the Canadian Werewolf series, is a huge fan of the Die Hard movies, just like the author of the book is. So, I, you know, he's a fan of Spider-Man. He's a, a fan of John McClane. He's a fan of the movie. He riffs on the movie. He riffs on these elements. I talk about how, you know, the personal traditions, you know, watching it at Christmas time with my family and you know, the first time my son and I sat down to watch it together when I figured it was old enough. So those are unique things that are in my book that you're obviously going to get in, in, in another book about the movie. And I've even had in previous, like in a previous incarnation, somebody who didn't like that and, and fruit that apparently in the review said that they threw the book. <laughs> they couldn't handle it. I'm like, well, I guess you're not my audience. Then. Yeah, well, we did talk about uh, the Canadian Mounted as part of the Indie Author Podcast. And um, one of the points you had made there, which I'm sure extends to Yippie Kaye as well, is that idea that you go into it knowing this is not a book for everyone. You go into it knowing that there's going to be a small niche that is going to love this and they're going to really, really love it. <laughs> yeah. It, it, it's almost like a thousand true fans, not a thousand fans, but having those people that are just so passionate and so engaged that they're so thrilled about the whole experience. Yeah. It's just as much theirs as it is yours. Yeah, That's where I find the pleasure. And, and I mean, if I could find that with every single book I wrote, that would be that would be the potential magic or silver bullet. Are you continuing the series because you're getting more of that feedback from these books than you have with other types of books you've read? I'm actually loving it so much. The research and the annoying Cliff Clavin style anecdotes that I can just spew out dinner parties and over dinner. And it's just, I have to be careful when I'm watching the, the films, the research, because I'm tempted to just go, did you know that in this scene, they filmed it in six different locations to get this 30 second clip? You know, like all the things I just have to, I have to curb my enthusiasm, so to speak, about those things. I decided that if I don't love, enjoy the process of putting this together, researching and writing it, how am I going to expect somebody to enjoy reading it? Yeah. So that's a good uh, transition to the second of the What I Learned questions, which is, what did you learn from Yippie Kaye that you'd like to share with your fellow readers? Oh, that is uh, good. I learned from EPK that I want to share with readers. I learned that there are more stories than you'll ever have space or time to tell. And that the key thing, I'm going to hearken back to a quote that Steve Martin's character says in Planes, Trains, and Automobiles is, you have to discriminate. Everything is an anecdote. You choose things that are mildly amusing or enter entertaining. And that's an important aspect. That there are going to be stories that I had that I wanted to share that didn't make it in because I, they either didn't fit or I wasn't able to work them in. And I'm going to have to leave them on, on the cutting room floor, so to speak, just like a director leaves scenes on the cutting room floor. And in the way that the sculpture who chips away the pieces of rock that don't look like the thing that they're envisioning, those pieces that you cut out of a book, those pieces that you leave on the cutting room floor help make product what it is. And so it's always great to watch those special features or to learn about the special features in a director's cut or whatever, but recognize where and why those things were cut because the experience of what was put together to tell that story is something that was carefully crafted for you. That's so great. Do you have other such books in your future? Should we be looking for a third in this series? I The challenge right now is there are at least two more properties that I'm very passionate about. And, and again, these are not decisions. Of, oh, this is a good marketing thing. This is, no, what are the things that I've returned to again and again and again and I can't get enough of? Those are the properties that I'm right. And therefore, I'm very specifically thinking of a very small group of nerds like me who will probably love it just as much as I do. That's so cool. 
Marco, it's great chatting with you about your BKA. And please let the viewers know where they can go to find out more about you and your latest book online. Sure. You can go to marklesley.ca and find links to all my books from there. Great. Thank you. Thanks, Maddie.